Hey everyone, thanks for uh, joining me today. This week we are going to talk about some dendrobiums, actually more the nobile type dendrobiums or the soft cane as you might hear them. Um, they're actually native to the uh, Chinese Himalayas, also to India, Nepal, uh, Vietnam, and Thailand, uh, also those surrounding countries. A lot of people have asked me about the different care for them. Um, what I do is I grow them in full sun, um, trying to come around here. Uh, it's a little overcast today. We have a storm in the area, so you can't really see. This is actually a south-facing uh, <coughs> wall of the house. So you can see actually they're all growing right over here, um, all in full sun, uh, not having any problems with burn. Uh, first time I actually ever grew one uh, was growing it in, uh, here's another one here. First time I actually started growing them, I wasn't getting the growth that I really wanted. Uh, I had talked to a, a very good dendrobium grower up in Pennsylvania now named Hal Hillier, who grew some really fantastic dendrobiums, especially the nobiles and some of the soft canes. And he told me directly, he said, hey, they're deciduous plants, throw them right out in full sun. They're gonna lose the leaves anyway, so if you get a little bit of burn on the leaves, it doesn't really matter. So generally, these, air, these plants come from areas uh, in Asia where they have a lot of monsoonal rain. Therefore, during their growth period, they're really getting downpours every day and they take a lot of water. Uh, you might actually notice that, especially in a pot like this, I grow mine in sphagnum moss, outside in the rain. Uh, some people really are afraid of getting too much sun or too much water, but for me they do really well. The good thing is air movement. If they're growing outside like this, uh, in South Florida we get a good breeze. We also uh, get a lot of rain, so I have not had much of a problem in the way of rotting. The only time I did get any that rotted um, were when they were not getting enough sunlight. Any of the ones growing in full sun all day long, they just don't have a problem with rotting at all. Now, these are all hybrids. <clears throat> Nobile is in the background somewhere, um, but they also have other dendrobiums that are in there with it. Uh, one of the dendrobiums uh, that I really like um, is this one right here, this really, really tall one that's in this Vanda basket. You can see the Vanda basket here. Um, this plant is about four and a half feet tall. Uh, that is Dendrobium pulchellum. Not necessarily a uh, nobile type or in the group of Dendrobium in the genus Dendrobium, um, but it is basically grown the same way. I, I keep that very, very wet in the growing period. Uh, a lot of fertilizer, and then really what I do is in I'd say the end of September, I stop fertilizing. The end of November, around Thanksgiving, I stop watering. And if it rains, they get a little bit of rain throughout the winter time. Um, but I don't give them any extra water at all during the winter season. If the canes start to dehydrate, then I will add just a little bit of water, maybe just run the hose right over it, but I'm not gonna soak the plant until I actually see the flowers open. Um, if they're just starting to bud up and you water them, they usually turn into kikis. Um, you can see a couple kikis back here, and that's actually from uh, watering while they were, before they actually produced flower buds. So um, here's another one that I got. It's a soft cane as well. That's uh, Dendrobium ammonum. Uh, I bought this from, uh, got this from Max Orchids uh, a couple years ago. It's producing really nice canes and is enjoying itself very wonderfully. <clears throat> the nice thing about these things, um, at least in South Florida, is because we have such a long growing season, you, I actually get two growths per year. So a lot of people actually say that they get um, two flowerings out of them. That's because of the two growth cycles. You have the first 
growth of the year, which will produce it earlier in, in the fall. You'll have the second growth um, later in the summer, which will actually be later in the spring. Um, this dendrobium right here, you can see there's actually um, a little flower on it. It has decided it didn't know when it wanted to bloom, but that's blooming out of the top of the, the new cane. That's actually dendrobium springbird kurashiki. Um, that plant I actually uh, got awarded uh, this spring. It had uh, over 700 flowers on it. It's in a four inch pot. Uh, did really, really well. I was really surprised. Uh, didn't think I was gonna get an award on it. Uh, came out pretty good. Uh, I'll post a picture of that on in a couple minutes. Um, some of these canes, as you notice, <clears throat> they're kind of falling over. That's okay as long as they're growing. Um, there's a fern in there that I got to really kind of get out of there. But um, generally what I'm going to do is for the flowering season, once I start drying these off, I will actually pull the canes up and tie them in place. Once they're tied in place, then as the leaves start to flower and or leaves start to fall off and then the plant starts to flower, then I'll be able to, uh, the flowers will come in the directions that I want them to come into. Um, if you notice, do you see that new growth? <clears throat> that new growth still has new leaves coming up. So that plant is actually not ready to be dried off. What I will do is while I'm um, going through and watering my plants from time to time, I will actually look at the new growths and see how far they are along. If you notice this one, I can bend that back there, that has stopped growing. That's not gonna put out any more new growths. The cane is maturing, and this one is prime candidate for one of the first ones that I'm gonna actually stop watering. Um, in fact, that's actually uh, Dendrobium Red Emperor Prince. Um, I have a smaller version of that. Um, that was the main plant. This one came from a kiki, and uh, you can see that one also has a mature uh, bulb on it now, and it's going to start maturing for the rest of the season. <clears throat> so this one is ye Dendrobium Yellow Panay March. You can see some of the canes kind of are so heavy they've kind of fallen over. Um, they're about two and a half to three feet tall. Um, again, you can see up at the top here, no new leaves coming out and let me see if I can focus in there so this one is mature it's going to uh, get ready for its rest for the winter you can see that the canes are kind of a yellowy green not a really deep green you want them more on the yellow side than on the green side uh, the weight of the canes are pulling them down um, once the leaves start to actually get uh, start falling off yellowing up I'm actually going to tie this up like I've taught tied up the last year's canes um, that way when the leaves fall off uh, the flowers when they do come out will be facing the right direction and it'll be ready for showing if I decide to show it um, or even just displaying it if I decide to bring it in the house um, yeah you can see where a couple of the the looper grasshoppers did eat the leaves there they are gone um, the minute I find those I get rid of them uh, the neat thing about this uh, dendrobium, dendrobium yellow panay march, is that when the flowers first appear, <clears throat> they are a very light, pale yellow, almost like a yellowy green. When it comes time for the, uh, a little bit of time, what happens, there's a little spider in there into protecting the plant so I'll leave that alone um, but like I said what happens is uh, once the flowers open up <clears throat> they're a very pale yellow green over time about a week or two they start to get a deeper yellow and a deeper yellow until they're a very bright canary yellow flower many people are familiar with this dendrobium this is uh, Dendrobium uh, Oriental Smile Fantasy. You can see, like I said, the, the yellow-green color in the leaves and in the canes. That's what you really want from these while you're growing them. 
if they're a deeper green, you probably won't get uh, as many flowers on them. Um, when this blooms, basically the, all of the cane is filled. The other nice thing is, is growing these in full sun, uh, instead of two or three flowers per cane, I usually get five or six flowers per cane. So I actually increase my flowering on them and um, the size is actually really nice too. I, I don't get smaller flowers because of the uh, number of flowers on them. Um, that's due to all the energy stored up in the plant by growing them in full sun. You can also see this is a kiki that um, I grew. This is actually last year it started to grow. This year this kiki is, uh, was mature enough that I could pull it off, pot it up, and this is I guess a three and a half inch plastic pot with sphagnum. And uh, that mature cane right there will probably flower this uh, next spring. And this plant is Dendrobium Country Girl Warabuta. A very nice robust plant. <clears throat> this plant has been at least doubling if not tripling in size every year so I can't wait to see this in bloom this year. Um, I know in one of the displays, one of the shows last year it was pulled and looked at for judging. I just don't think it had um, enough open flowers when it went in but uh, this year um, looking at it it's probably going to be fantastic when it does bloom. It's a really large plant. This dendrobium is Dendrobium Oriental Gem Midnight. Kind of looks like the Oriental Smile Fantasy, except it's a little bit darker in color or deeper in color than the uh, Oriental Smile Fantasy. Okay, so this plant here is Dendrobium Pink Rabbit Grace. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but it's got what is it, like six or seven or maybe eight canes on it, new canes from this year's growth. The really nice thing I like about this plant, um, you can see where it had all the flowers last year. The flowers on this are a lot larger than a normal nobile type dendrobium, um, and actually the size of a small cattleya flower, probably about four, four and a half inches across. So you get really large, light pink flowers. Okay, so this is my Dendrobium Spring Bird Kurashiki, the one with the little flower that's up there that's kind of on the premature side. If I can get that to, to zoom in and actually stick, I don't think it's cooperating too well. But anyway, it's got almost twice as many canes as it did last year when it was awarded. Um, last year I think there was 30 some canes. Um, there's 40 or 50 some new canes this year. There's a new um, flower that's getting ready to come. Flowers are coming from the very top of the cane, the new canes, not the sides where they normally come. So I'm really not worried about that. It does that every now and then. Um, but you can see a lot of nice new growth. <clears throat> Sphagnum moss, there's a really nice root system in there. You can see it. There's also, um, aside from a couple of little weeds in there, there's still some new growths that are coming up. I don't worry about those either. By the time um, blooming starts next year, those will be mature. Like I said, uh, fertilize until the end of September. Um, stop watering at the end of November and leaves are gonna fall off it. They are deciduous. Once you see the buds start to form on the sides of the cane, leave them be, leave the plant be unless the canes are shriveling. Once you see the actual flower buds developing, then you can start watering again. Um, I do use a time-release fertilizer, and uh, that's really all I give them throughout the year. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to sponsor, there's a link down below. You can sponsor to help out with the videos, uh, and have a good day.